This video introduces some of the concepts surrounding waves. Waves are all around us. The most obvious waves are the waves we see on the water. Waves have definitions, concepts such as wavelength, amplitude, frequency, period. These will be some of the things that I'll be introducing. Here are waves on Chuk Lagoon. Waves also actually provide for some sports activities such as surfing here in San Diego. Waves can form beautiful patterns like these waves in Pilyol and Koshrai. We can see the crests of the waves. The distance between the crests will turn out to be one wavelength. And waves form behind a canoe on the Dasakela estuary. You can see the waves forming beside the outrigger there. And wave patterns are left on a beach by the wave actions, as seen here. Those are actually waves in the sand. A ripstick is a form of skateboard with swiveling wheels that's propelled by the swiveling action of the rider. The result is that the ripstick lays down a wave form. And this... Uh, waveform will provide for us a example that we can use. You'll see that waveform, that sinusoidal propulsion as it's known, more clearly here. It is actually the wiggling that is moving the board up the hill. The board is actually going uphill there, being propelled by the wiggling and pushing off the posts. The board will be ridden across a piece of paper as seen here and that will leave behind a waveform on the paper. During the ride, the time will be recorded, and later we'll go back and put marker over the wheel marks so we can see better what has been recorded. The board has laid down about three waves in a time span of 2.14 seconds as it crossed the piece of paper. The board started here at the right edge that you can see. There's a little bit of the wave there. We'll come back to that in a moment. And then there was a trough formed, and then a crest. And the board is actually moving here from right to left on the paper. And beyond that crest, another trough. The blue line is the center line of the board as it moved down the piece of paper. As the board moved off the left edge of the paper, you'll see that there's actually an incomplete crest at that left edge of the paper. If you put together that little piece on the right edge and glue it onto the end here, if you will, to the crest at this edge, you would get a full crest. And so between these, we can count the number of waves on the paper. With a small piece on the right and a larger piece on the left, you can see if you look that there are a total of three full crests and troughs on this paper. One crest and one trough makes one wave. A crest and a trough is a wave. It's also true that the distance from a crest to a crest and from a trough to a trough is a wavelength. These are all the same distance. So if one measures the length of a crest and a trough together, as seen here, from where the crest crosses the center line, going up, back down through the center line, and then the trough back up to the center line, one will have measured one wavelength. A crest and a trough make one full wavelength. And we can see here that that distance is 0 0.84 meters. The wavelength of the ripstick wave is 0 0.84 meters. While the wavelength is a distance along the center line, the length of the wave, the distance from the center line to the top of the crest, or from the center line down to the trough, is called the amplitude. This one is confusing. It's not the distance from the bottom of the trough to the top of the crest. It's half that distance. It's the distance from the center line to the top of the crest. 
or from the center line down to the bottom of the trough. So you can see it's about 0 0.07 meters, roughly 7 centimeters in this diagram. While wavelength and amplitude are measurements in space, it took time for the wave to be laid down. In fact, it took 2.14 seconds for the board to cross the paper from the right side to the left side of the paper. 2.14 seconds to lay down three waves. Put another way, there were 2.14 seconds per three waves. That means it took 0 0.71 seconds per wave. Each wave took 0 0.171 seconds to lay down. That 0 0.71 seconds is the period. The period is the length of time for one wave to occur. The period is one wave. So we had 2.14 seconds for three waves, 0 0.71 seconds for each of those waves, and that is the period. The period is the length of time for one wave to be laid down by the board. The period is a measure of time. The frequency is the number of waves per second. It's the reciprocal of the period. Three waves divided by 2.14 seconds means that I am making 1.4 waves per second. 1.4 cycles per second. Or in physical science, we use the units hertz, 1.4 hertz. The frequency of the wave is 1.4 hertz. The period of the wave is 0 0.71 seconds. The symbol for the wavelength is that upside down Y. It's actually the Greek letter lambda. It's a lowercase l. And we found that our wavelength was 0 0.84 meters. If you take the wavelength and multiply by the frequency of 1.4 hertz, you will get the speed of the wave. The formula wavelength times frequency yields the wave speed. And when you multiply them, you get 1.18 meters per second. That's the speed with which the ripstick was moving, with which the ripstick laid down the wave. Up to now, the mathematics we've been working with are equations such as linear equations or second-order quadratic equations that make parabolas. This shape that's on the paper is called a sine wave. It is known as a sinusoidal wave. This particular shape is generated by the sine function. Now that involves some math known as trigonometry. My goal isn't to teach trigonometry, not in physical science. In physics, yes, we would tackle trigonometry but not in physical science. But that's the equation there. You'll see it has a y and an x. This is the equation for the wave using the wave length. This is the wave in space. Bear in mind there's also a wave in time. I won't look at that in this particular section. But if I plug that equation in, you can see it there in purple, I get a sine wave. Notice the a in the front has become the amplitude, and I've put the wave length underneath the 2 pi x. And below, an animation of the red dot shows you the ripstick moving down the sine wave that it creates, a model of the system. So this system, too, is mathematical. So in this video, I've introduced ideas such as wave speed, the period of a wave, the amplitude of a wave, the wave length of a wave, the calculation of the frequency. Remember, time divided by the number of waves gets you the period, the length of one wave in time. Whereas if you take the number of waves and divide by the time, you get the frequency. I know that's confusing. Go back and watch the video again and again and again. Um, but the frequency is how rapidly something is wiggling and the period is the length of time for one wiggle. I've also shown you the equation of the wave. Uh, 
that is a sine wave, a trigonometric wave.